بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ولا آله وصحبه ومن ولا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Mashallah, I heard some uh, murmuring from this side, so I'm going to try that again, and inshallah, let's put a little bit more enthusiasm to it, because remember that this is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you reply to my salam, then first of all, we are you know, fulfilling the order of Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, in the English meaning that if you are given a greeting, then reply to it with a better greeting, or at least a similar greeting. And in the greeting that we learn from our beloved messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, it also includes the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So I've got um, a screen in front of me that says 20 minutes and it's all zeros. So alhamdulillah, we, we have endless amount of time. <laughs> MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Um, first of all, brothers and sisters, it's my pleasure to be here today. And I am humbled to be in front of you today. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give each and every one of you and the best of rewards in this life and the next for your efforts in coming to this gathering, MashaAllah, tabarakallah. I think this is the 42nd um, convention, if I'm not mistaken. And alhamdulillah, I have had the pleasure to attend about the last five or six of them. And every time I come to this gathering, I'm so pleased to see the Muslims, mashallah, coming together from all the different parts of the country and taking the time and making the effort to increase our iman. And we increase our iman at every opportunity that we can. Because iman is that commodity that we cannot place a value on it. That when we think about the effort that we make to accumulate things, and the effort that we make on things that we feel they are important or have benefit or have value, then we can't even count the, the hours, we can't even count the worry, we can't even count the concern that we put into those efforts, whether it be money, or whether it be our education, or whether it be taking care of our families, or striving to you know, get married. Um, we put a lot of time and effort you know, are striving to marry our children as well. So alhamdulillah, when we come together to make effort for Iman, this is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the topic today is regarding that the time for talk is over and now it is the time for action. And the Muslims in action, faith in action, service to humanity. But I want to just maybe amend that a little bit and recognize that and it is not that necessarily the time for talk is over. We always have to you know, contemplate, discuss, and, and, and ask, and, and learn, and so forth. But if we don't couple that and follow that up with action, then where is the benefit? I mean, where is the benefit? Because we know that just as we have to make effort to gain Iman, we have to make effort in order to move, mashallah, our ummah forward in the context of the time in which we live, the time and place in which we live. So mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us that we live here in the United States in this particular point in history. And believe me, this is no accident. 
It doesn't make a difference where you are from sitting here today, meaning where you are or were born. But Allah has decreed that you would be here in the United States. And that means that we have a job to do. We have a responsibility to impart. And it is twofold. Of course, the first part of it is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that if we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah alayhi wa salatu wassalam. And that's it. We don't do anything else. We don't pray. We don't give zakah. We don't fast. We don't make intention and then make the effort to fulfill the, the pillar of Hajj. Then what is the value of that statement? What is the value of that statement? What is it that gives the, the truth to the statement? What, if it, what is it that gives value to the statement is the efforts that we make as a result of that belief. So those five things that I mentioned, of course, that we understand, all of us, we know them, we learn them when we enter Islam, if we entered Islam at a mature age, or if we are born into a Muslim household, we, earn, we learn them very early on, the, the five pillars of Islam. But we have to remember what the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, what he said. And this hadith, of course, narrated on the authority of Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, that he said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Buni al-Islam ala khams, that Islam is built upon five. Now when we just take those words of the Prophet والسلام, who was given, mashallah, the gift of Jawami al-Kalam from Allah Subhanahu wa that he say, alayhi wasalam, he say just a few words. And there's great meaning, in-depth meaning in the words of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he began that, that particular hadith by saying what? Buniya. And he, that's of course, and he, in the Arabic language, the, the, the verb, and he, mebni lil it's built on, a, and he, on the premise of the one who is doing the action is general or you know, not specified. But what does the first word imply? Action. Buni. How can you build something if you don't move? How can you build something if you don't make effort? How can you build something if you don't sweat, if you don't strive? So Buni al-Islam, Islam itself has to be built. It only comes with action. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that Islam, in English meaning, is built upon five things. And those five things, as I mentioned, we all know them, the Khamsa Arkan of Islam. But the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave us that hadith which tells us that these five things are not the sum of Islam. They are not the sum of the parts of Islam. But Islam, the structure of our way of life, is built upon those five. Those five are very intimate, very personal between us and Allah. And the shahada tain, only Allah knows what's in the heart when we pronounce the shahada. And the salah, of course, that only Allah knows the condition of the, the intention and the devotion, the concentration in the heart of the individual who's performing salah. And zakah, mashallah, only Allah knows if we actually give it or pay it or not. Fasting, of course, we all know about the fasting. As the Prophet mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi that Allah said, Innu li wa ana that it is indeed for me and I will give the reward for it. Personal between the slave and the master, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the Hajj. And that even though it is, mashallah, performed and with the Muslims in that great congregation coming from all over the world, that we know that the first condition of an accepted hajj is the niyyah, is the intention in the heart of the one who was performing it. So those five things are between 
the individual and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the rest of that structure, because if we don't complete the structure, then we have not fulfilled the, the requirement of establishing the deen of Allah. And when the Prophet والسلام, says that Islam is built upon five things, let us say the analogy of building a building. If I build a building, then I must begin with what? With a strong foundation. So that means I have to do some digging, I have to pour some concrete, and put some, some metal rebar, and lay some bricks, or have some strong uh, wood. I have to have all the things that make for a good, solid foundation. But if I do not complete the structure, if I just do the foundation and then I stand back and look and pat myself on the back and say, oh, what a great foundation. But there are no walls, there are no windows, there are no doors, there's no roof. And nobody will benefit from that structure. They'll pass by it and leave it and say, oh, somebody did not complete it. It's not finished. It's not going to benefit anyone. So we have to recognize that we have to build the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes through the efforts of the believers individually and collectively. And our place right now in this society is one that we, we understand, we recognize that we are being scrutinized as Muslims in a way that I cannot recall in my 30 plus years as a Muslim. That of course, in recent years and even in recent months, that more and more the scrutiny is on the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam here in the United States where we live every day. So we have to push back against that quote unquote Islamophobia. I really don't like using that word, but because it's become part of the vernacular, and we have to recognize that it's a reality that people have this negative connotation about Islam and Muslims. And that means that we have to get busy, that we have to work because who is it that is going to push back against this negativity? Who is it that is going to be the source of an expression of the true beauty and light of the deen of Al-Islam if it is not the ummah of, the mess of Muhammad والسلام, the messenger of Allah. So that is you and I, brothers and sisters. We need to strengthen ourselves through our ibadah, through our actions to please Allah as individuals, and we need to strengthen ourselves as communities, as institutions. MashaAllah, Ikna Relief USA, Islamic Circle of North America Relief, is an organization that is devoted to domestic social services, service to humanity. Perhaps many of you are aware, and perhaps some of you did not hear the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, as narrated by Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, that he said in the meaning of the hadith that a man came, and one, and one rewire, two men came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ayyi nas ahabbu illallah, and Ayyu nasin ahabbu illallah, which people are most loved by Allah? Now certainly, we would all want to be in that category. We would all want to be amongst those whom Allah loves them, from the, the most beloved to Allah. And we can surmise that these Sahabis, that when they came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, may Allah be pleased with them, that they wanted to know that to see how they can make the effort, how they can work to put themselves in a position to perhaps be included by the most beloved people to Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, replied by saying, Ahabbu nas illallah and fa'ahum lin nas. SubhanAllah. He said, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, that the most beloved people to Allah are those whom 
They bring the most benefit for mankind. They bring the most benefit for mankind. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, went on to say, well, Allah, and the most beloved action to Allah yani is sururun, yani happiness to khuluhu ala al Muslim. Happiness that you bring to your fellow Muslim, your brother or your sister in Islam, when they are experiencing a difficulty, a hardship, when they are hungry, when they are homeless, when they are in financial difficulty, when they need some good advice, when they need some counseling, when they need some training, when they need somebody just to you know, give them a kind word and to listen to them. These are the types of things that ICNA Relief is doing on an institutional basis, an institution established here in the United States for the purpose of fulfilling the needs of our brothers and sisters in Islam and expanding that effort to our brothers and sisters in humanity. Because the Prophet Sallallahu he did not just say you know, that those whom that they bring the most benefit for the Ummah, but he said Linas for mankind. So the Islamic Circle of North America Relief USA right now, brothers and sisters, is operating 14 transitional housing shelters for our Muslim sisters. Muslim sisters who, for whatever reason, that they don't have a place to stay. And believe me, it happens across this country every day. Every day. MashaAllah. We may not recognize it. We may not see it. Maybe Allah has blessed us where we have not had those type of difficulties or anyone that we know directly. But I can tell you that it is happening every day. And we are operating these shelters to make sure that our sisters, if they have that type of difficulty, that they have a place to go. That they have a place where they're going to find safety, security, that they're going to find a place where they can continue to practice their Islam and be in an environment that will help them until Allah SWT makes a way for them to move on in the society. That we are operating 27 food pantries throughout the United States, feeding tens of thousands of people every month. Tens of thousands of people every month with the basics and the staples of the pantry, with hot meals, and taking meals and feeding them to the homeless, and just fulfilling that, that effort of feeding the poor, of bringing, of bringing those services to those in need. Muslim family services, we have counseling for our brothers and sisters Counselors who, mashallah, are trained not only in counseling techniques, but, mashallah, are trained and based and grounded in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those that they know the difficulties that we face, they know the cultural um, you know, schisms that sometimes Muslims find themselves in when they come from other countries that the, the difficulties in dealing in this society uh, when we are in, social, in, in certain social situations and so forth. So we have the Muslim family services as well. We are also operating six free clinics. How many people in this society, they don't have health insurance? That if they get sick, they need a checkup, they need some medicine, then what are they to do? that we are operating six clinics, free clinics throughout the United States. We are doing disaster response work where the Muslim community with the shirts that we wear, Muslims for Humanity, that when we have, are, are dealing with the aftermath of a tornado, of a flood, of a hurricane, of a fire, of a catastrophe, man-made or natural, that we are coming to the aid of those impacted, rather that regardless of their faith, regardless of their, you know, their, their financial status, regardless of any of those things, that we want to help and be there at the time of need. Why? Because this is what our deen requires of us. 
This is who we are as the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And when we work, brothers and sisters, within the community, in this grassroots effort, just like today after the Juma, they went, the brothers and sisters went out in the surrounding community and they gave out 500 plus blessing bags and food and, and personal items, hygiene items to those whom that they don't have the ways and means to routinely purchase those things. We're doing that because we have to show our faith in our actions that yes, we are striving to establish our own personal relationships with Allah, but we have to come together and support and expand institutions like Igni Relief USA that are doing this work throughout the country on a daily basis. So we hope, bismillah, bi'idnillah, that by virtue of your taking the time and the effort to come and to attend this convention, that through the, the lectures that you hear, the interaction that you have, the workshops that you participate in, that when you leave here, inshallah, whether it's tomorrow or whether it's Sunday, but when you leave here to go back to your homes, that you leave here with a renewed motivation, recognizing that we have to embrace who we are and that we are not just that individual whom we believe in Allah and the Messenger والسلام, and we strive to you know, establish our ibadah for his pleasure, but we collectively are the ummah of Muhammad والسلام, and once we embrace that and once we move and once we begin to truly act in accordance of the Book of Allah and the methodology, the teaching, and the practice of the Messenger والسلام, then it will become evident, illa masha'Allah, that we are the best thing that ever happened to this country. We are, and don't feel shy about it. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the most beloved people to Allah SWT are those whom they bring the most benefit to mankind, who is number one on that list that the one that brings the most benefit to mankind? Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi wa salam, The one through whom the final and permanent miracle of the Quran come, came for the benefit of all the worlds. Rahmatul alameen. The one through whom, through his countenance, through his akhlaq, his character, through his interaction with his people, that we learn the true meaning of humanity. So when we embrace who we are as his ummah, then indeed we will be the vehicle through which by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will bring the light, the true light and beauty of this deen to the masses of this society. And then the hidayah is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, yes indeed, we have been talking and talking and talking. I don't say that the time for talk is finished, but the time to put the talk into action is definitely upon us. And when we have the intention and we make the effort and we have the help of the guidance and we come together, mashallah, as Allah SWT said, بَدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُصْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ That when we come together and fulfill that formula of saving ourselves from the state of loss by establishing the righteous, the, the iman, the faith in Allah and the righteous deeds and then coming together and helping and supporting one another in establishing the truth and establishing the patience and the constancy in our actions, then indeed and we will be an expression of that kalima that we say every day. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Wa jazakum Allah khairan wa barak Allah fikum. I call it called the hadith wa astaghfirullah wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiruhu inna Allah laghafur rahim. Barak Allah fikum.